Hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, thanks again to everyone who's been watching. Please don't forget, if you do like the channel, um, tap the like, click on the subscribe button, and also if you want to be notified of videos we put up, tap the little bell, and you'll, yeah, so you'll be notified of our videos every Wednesday and Sunday evening. So, can't quite believe it, already, yeah, we're already at the end of, well, already into the 1st of March, um, so that's February gone, um, even though it's a leap year, 29 days this year. 29 days of pretty rubbish weather, as you know, we've been moaning about a lot. Um, so anyway, as, as with what we did in January, this is going to be a recap. So today's video, we will go back and just see what we've done um, in the month of February and just go through all the different crops we've got growing and yeah what's been happening so we'll go and show you um all that's been going on so the cows um as you saw in our video from last week they're all still inside um they will be going out should be this month during march they should be coming should be going outside um out to grazing um as, as soon as the weather dries up so now we're into march we will get them outside and they'll definitely start grazing during the daytime um we've still fortunately still got a lot of silage a lot of maize silage grass silage left so it's not really affecting us too much them being inside but we'd like to get them out soon um just annoying i say grass is growing um but we just can't conditions aren't good enough to um get them out yet got fernando here just unloading some bales um these were some, I think some fourth cut last summer, which we let, let go a bit of stemmy. Um, so this, these will be fed to the dry cows. Um, for the dry cows, we like the bales to be a bit more stemmy. Um, so that's what these are. So when I say stemmy, I mean like, can you see that there? It's all really tough. It's basically, it's, it's pretty much hay, um, but more like haylage. So he just unloading this and going to clear a few more fields of bales before we, um, well, when the weather dries up, we get them plowed and put into potatoes. expertly done <laughs> and that's him all done so he'll head off now and he'll get another load of bales
so moving on to the polytunnels um so these are indoor these are the polytunnels all in plastic plastic metal hoops and they're all covered over um these were all planted back in december um all looking yeah looking okay um we can pull one up and see um, to see how they are and how far away they are um so what we tend to do is grow the indoor um they will start start the supply before we start harvesting on the coatees um so we can start with the indoor and then gradually um move on to the to the outdoor crop after so you see here um they are growing well um we were a bit later than usual um, putting them in this year but as you can see there they're kind of growing well um another couple of weeks we'll probably start we do judge it on when we reckon the outdoor crop will be ready um but yeah they're all starting to like well i don't know marble size getting to the size of a golf ball um and yeah looking good still plenty of moisture there so they won't need won't need any water because obviously you've got roofs on here so no rain comes in so we have to water them if you want them to grow but yeah fingers crossed no more cold weather and they'll be ready to harvest um, just before Easter. So plastic is now starting to come off we've taken the first as we saw last week the first of the early slopes also taken off a few more um, quite a bit of wind damage from the storms last week you can see here literally sort of down there just um some of the stems being completely completely snapped in half um and it's not really ideal it gives a mass there's a really increases the chance of this potato getting blight because you're opening up um basically like flesh a bit like on a human skin you're kind of cutting it open and this increases the chance that um spores and fungi can develop and then blight can attack the potato through this way um so rather than leaving the, the plastic on like you probably would have done for another week or so we've taken this field off just so we can um get a fungicide on to try and help protect them and then also just a we thought it would do less damage than the plastic to keep flapping on them it's quite windy again today and it's windy tomorrow but other than that they would have been looking really good they're looking a little bit sorry for themselves but we're hoping that um by well hopefully by this time next week the weather looks like it's going to improve they'll perk up and um improve quite a bit but you can see the one over there has also been uncovered so these are our first early slopes right above um Greville bay the same way in the coatees just below down there so moving on to cauliflowers you can see we're in the field it's absolute story of this year's cauliflower harvest absolute mud um finally they have so like i said saying back in end of december early january we were really short didn't have that many so yeah we've have finally got some um you can see these a lot of these are being cut now and we're moving on to the last few varieties um they just we've still had a lot of problems um a lot of collies just kind of not really bolted but they they just the heads were opening and they weren't big enough so that's why this one hasn't been picked because basically the quality of it went and it's just not big enough so it wouldn't have been big enough to harvest um and then other ones yeah they just seem to the heads were opening up and they were going off before they were ready so that's why these they look like funny collies but these didn't get picked because i say before the heads were big enough to even cut they were already opening up and the quality had gone um so it's no good um picking a small head so that's why all of this kind of section here there's one two three four four beds in this field basically one variety which has been pretty much completely wasted um again we don't really know why 100 percent sure um whether it's just a whole combination of factors probably the milder milder start to the 
well, the, the, the whole way through it's been mild. Um, I think they were saying this morning we've had the least amount of frost so far in the winter. Could be a record for the, the fewest frosts we've ever had. Um, cauliflowers do like the cold weather. They like the cold weather to make sure that they all mature at the right time. Um, and also the storm damage might just affect them. But yeah, we're looking forward to the end of this cauliflower season. <laughs> um, but yeah. So here we are now in a field of winter wheat. Um, so we grow, go around 60 verges of winter cereals. So we do about 30 verges of winter wheat, and then we do about 30 verges of winter barley. So that's about 30 acres. Um, we all, considering considering the winter we've had, really pleased with it, to be honest. Um, looking good. Um, getting pretty desperate for yeah okay i need to get some fertilizer on and get a fungicide on soonish but it's just so wet we're struggling had the agronomist out um this week alan um and he reckoned it's about growth stage 24. um i'm far from an expert on cereals so yeah i just trust him on that <laughs> um but yeah hoping to get some fertilizer on and then it will perk up and normally there's quite a few docks in this field as well other than that it's pretty clean but these docks will need sorting out so we can get a, a herbicide a herbicide is a spray that kills weeds um, we can mix that in with the spray we're going to put on to make sure the leaves stay nice and green um, and that will then keep the plant growing nice and green and also take out these these dock leaves as we don't want the dock leaves growing um, otherwise they will cause an issue when we come to harvest the crop the dock leaves will all still be green and it's really important when we come to harvest the cereals we want the plant to be as dry as possible um, and all the grain to be dry so by having green a green dock leaf example in your in your uh, sample of grain or your in your straw it's going to cause it to um, the moisture to increase and have had bad bales or your grain will be too high in moisture so yeah fingers crossed in another month's time we'll have fertilizer on and also get a fungicide on and they'll be hopefully growing well so thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed today's video um just recapping all of what we've done in february um yeah it's sunny as you can see behind me which is good good start to march um, let's keep our fingers crossed it stays that way and we will see you all on Wednesday for our next video. So thanks again for watching, see you all soon.